All right, people, I'm in Excel and that's where I've got my data right here. You can see that in the data, we clearly have two headers. This is the main header, which is the country, and then we have three subheaders, the product, the value, and the share percentage. Now, what I would want to do with this particular data is somehow unpivot the groups of the columns. The first three columns, I would like to keep them as the way they are. And then the next three columns are going to come below that. And then the next three columns are then going to come below that. Apart from that, I also want to convert the main header into an unpivoted column, let's say country right here, and that is going to be replicated for every single group of columns. So the country is going to come right here as a column, and then the country is going to come right here as a column. And then after that, you're going to maybe stack the data one below the other. You can call that as stacking, you can call that as unpivoting, whatever that might be, but this is how I would want the data to be formatted. Let's just load this data in Power Query and solve that in merely five steps using the M language. Let's start. All right, I've got the data loaded in Power Query and let's just lay our first foot and start to make the first step. In the first step, my aim is to have three tables since we have three groups of columns. So I would like to have this as one table of the data and this as the second table of the data and then eventually this as the third table of the data. I wanna split them into three different tables. How do we do that? That's all going to be in one single step, let's start. So to begin with, I'm gonna create a new step right here. And in that particular step, I'm gonna say that for now, I am not willing to consider the first row of the data and please remove the first row of the data. I will figure out that how do I get the first row back later, but for now, I just don't want it. So I'm gonna say that uh, table.skip and the table is nothing but the source table, which is the previous step. And I would like to skip one row off of that. Press enter and the first row is gone. Once the first row has been deleted, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now kind of start uh, creating columns of the data or lists of the data and treat every single column as a list. Let me help you visualize what am I trying to do. I'm trying to pull apart column number one as one list and column number two as list number two and column number three as list number three and list four and then list five, so on and so forth. So if we have nine columns, I will, I will end up with nine different lists. Well, how do we do that? I'm gonna go ahead and start to wrap this function in a round table dot two columns and I will just start the bracket and close the bracket in the end. Table.2Columns function is gonna pick up every single column and convert that into a list. So we have nine columns and we'll end up with nine different lists. That was table.2Columns, not column, and now we have nine different lists. Now, if you think about it mentally, you're gonna see that obviously this is my first column, this is my second column, this is my third column, and all of these three lists are going to form one table the next three lists are going to form the second table and the next three lists are going to form the third table. That's how I would want. So now I would want to bucket these lists or merge these lists into let's say splits of three or let's say groups of three. So I'm gonna use a list grouping function or, lists, or a list split function, which is where I'll say that I would like to do a list split. This is nothing but my list and after every three items, I would like to make a split. I would like to make a split, that's what I'd like. So it says, hey, what's your list? Uh, the list is right here. And uh, what's the page size number? My page size number is nothing but three. I'm just gonna come in right here and say number three, press enter, and I get, of the nine lists, I get three lists. Now, if you actually peek into the list, the first list, it is now grouped all the first three columns into three lists, and they are right here. These are, these are the first three columns of the data and then these are the next three columns of the second table, the next three columns of the third table. Now at the moment, once we have received the lists, I would like to take this list, which is nothing but an amalgamation of three different lists, and I'll compile that into a table. So let's just see how do we do that. I'm gonna go ahead and start writing more code. So I'll say list.transform, and I'll say that, hey, here is the list that I'm trying to transform, which is where you should pick up every single list, which is nothing but three more lists inside of that and form a table. I'm gonna go ahead and say something like, uh, go inside every single row and do something like uh, each table dot from columns. And I will just put the underscore right here to refer to that list. Now, if I press enter, you're gonna see that the nested list has been transformed into a table. So that's my first table, that's my second table, and that's my third table. We had three different lists right here, those lists have gotten back in the form of a table. That is nice. Now the only problem at the moment is that uh, this is not really 
kind of a value of the first row. This is the header of the first row. So I'm actually going to go ahead and promote that uh, as the first row in the header. So table dot promote headers, start the bracket, close the bracket in the end, press enter, and that promotes the headers of the table. Now, once we have gotten the three tables, it's now time to add the fourth column, which is nothing but my country column. In case you're liking the video thus far, you're going to absolutely love my courses on Power Query, DAX, data modeling, and especially the M language, which is where I break down very complicated concepts around data cleaning and ETL, and then try to help you understand that how do you build or how do you frame logic to be able to build your solution on your own data. These are extremely structured courses, which is where I take students right from scratch, build up the fundamentals, and then we go on start talking about more advanced, more complicated problems. Hundreds of students have joined my courses and they have left some raving feedback about the course. In case you're interested to take your skills to the next level, I'll highly encourage that you take a look at the courses and they will be super beneficial. Thanks so much. Let's just move on to the second step of the query to get the country column. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new step and I'm gonna call this as my first row. That's what I'm trying to get here. So if you take a look at the source table, this is the first row which contained all the countries that I'm trying to somehow get right here. Let's just start to work. So I'm going to say that, hey, why don't you reference yourself to the source table? And from the source table, why don't you pull up the first row, which is source and the zero means the first row of the table. Now, at the moment, I get a record, but I don't really want to work with a record because record also has the column names and I have got nothing to do with the column names. I am particularly interested in just these values. So I'm going to transform the record into a list by using the function record dot list. Start the bracket close the bracket in the end, press enter, and that becomes a list. At the moment, we have null values. We have got no business with the null values. I will remove that as well. So I'll say list dot remove nulls, start the bracket, and then close the bracket in the end, and that actually removes all the null values. Now, at the moment, what we have been able to get is nothing but a list. And you can't pretty much do a lot with the list, especially if I want to add more columns right here. Now what we're going to do is to be able to add more columns to the list, I will transform the list into a table structure. Let's just see how do we do that. Well, there is a function available for that, which is nothing but table.fromList. And the table.fromList function asks, hey, give me a list to work with. Sure enough, here is the list that you're trying to work with. Do you have any splitter? That means do you want to split the word India? Of course not. I don't really want to split the word India. So I will say that my splitter is nothing, which is a null. And then it says, hey, do you want to when you create a table, the table has a column. And do you want to name that column as something? Sure enough, I want to name that particular column as my country. And I'm going to close the bracket right here, press enter, and we get a country column. Now, this is nothing but a table. And the benefit of the table is that we would now be able to add more columns right here. To this country column that we have gotten here, let's just create an index column. So I'm just going to go ahead to the add columns tab. And I'm just going to go ahead and say that I want to create an index column that starts with zero. Now, you're wondering that why, why am I creating an index column? And I will just explain that to you in a second. But for now, I don't really like the names with spaces. So I'm just going to call this as table with index. If you've been wondering that why the heck did I add the index column, it makes no sense in the middle of the query. Well, let me explain you how this is going to work. And this is going to be pure magic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the zeroth serial number or the zeroth index position to fetch the table. Now, we have got three countries and India is marked as the first position or the zeroth position, then I'm gonna use the zero to actually get the first table off of this particular step. If you actually go to this particular step, you're gonna see that this table belongs to India, that is the zeroth position, this table belongs to the second country, and this table belongs to the third country, and that is exactly what I'm gonna use these numbers for. Well, how do you do that? Let's take a look. So I'm gonna go back to this step, and after that, I will add a new step. And rather than having 0, 1, and 2, I would rather have the tables fetched from this particular step. Let's just see how do we do that. I'm going to say that, hey, I'm just trying to transform this particular table. So table.transform columns. I'll start the bracket. And I'm going to say that, hey, here is a table that I'm trying to work with. And the transformation is going to be done on the index column. So I'll just mention the index column. And for now, let me just go ahead and write the each and the underscore, which is going to make no difference to the output whatsoever. That means the same output is returned 0 is 0, 1 is 1, and 2 is 2. Now, I will say that why don't you just go to this particular step, which is the table step, and fetch the zeroth item, which is nothing but the underscore. And the way to write that is in the curly bracket and close the additional curly bracket in the end. And that is going to bring the tables right here. 
So now against India, we have the table of India. Against US, we have the table of the US. Against Australia, we have the table of Australia. This is phenomenal. You've almost guessed the last step, which is nothing but expanding the three tables. I can just click on the expand button, but there is a twist to that. And I will tell that to you in just a second. So I will click on all of these columns, product value and the share, click on okay. Because the country column was alongside, that also gets expanded and we have the nice data format like the way that we wanted. But, but don't leave yet. We have a problem. That means that Tomorrow, if the column names change, if we just go back to the source tab, and if these column names change product value and share, although I'm assuming that these three columns are going to remain three columns only, but if the names change, our data is not going to be updated automatically. So what do we do? Instead of actually writing the column names manually or hard coded, what I'm going to say is that, hey, why don't you just go to these tables, pick up the first table, and whatever column names are here are the same column names that I want to expand in this particular step as well. How do we say all of that in the language of M? I'm gonna go ahead in this particular step and I will delete the hard-coded names of the columns. And I'm gonna say that, hey, I wanna reference this particular table. So I will just write the tables right here. From this particular table, I would like to go to the first row and that is going to be the tables and then curly bracket the zeroth item. I will just say that. And this is going to be the zeroth item. But I don't want the entire table. I just want the column names off of that. So I can just wrap this around the table dot column names function, which is going to give me a list of column names. And that is just going to fit right well. If I just press OK, the hard coded names have gone away and we have been able to get a nice entire data that you can load in Excel and enjoy the fruits of it. Here is another video that you should watch in case you want to learn multiple unpivoting column stacking kind of options, data wrangling options in Power Query. You're going to love this one. Click right here and I'll see you in that video.